Good afternoon, parents and students. Welcome to the first annual virtual open house here at Farragut High School. We are extremely excited to hopefully get to interact with you here in just a little bit via our live Teams meeting. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Ms. Tannery and I have put together a little agenda here. We're going to talk about just our general class of 2022 team. Some of the faces are new and some you have seen before. Talk about general behavior, those academic expectations, and Ms. Tenry is going to give you quite a bit of information as we look to junior and eventually senior year, which kind of feels crazy. For those of you that I've not had a chance to meet yet, my name is Kara Vaughn. I am the 11th grade assistant principal this year here at Farragut High School, and I'm extremely excited to be working with this community, your students, Ms. Tenry. I've really enjoyed so far getting to know so many of them. Here's the rest of our team. You'll see Dr. Bartlett there, Ms. Hatfield, our curriculum principal. Ms. Katie King is someone that your students and you will become more familiar with, and Ms. Tenry will talk more about her here in a little bit. Mr. Smith is with our ninth graders, Mr. Killian is with our 10th graders, and Dr. Lewis is new to the Farragut family. She is with our seniors this year. In terms of behavior, the class of 2022 is off to an amazing start. They've made my job pretty easy these first few weeks. Do want to remind students to make sure that they are on time for class. Um, if they do have a tardy, just letting us know ahead of time if it was a doctor's appointment, something like that, that's always helpful. If teachers are asking students to put their mask up and wear them correctly, we do expect the students co to comply with that as masks are required when social distancing is not possible. And as Dr. Bartlett has said, here in the building, it's very difficult to maintain six feet of social distancing. So masks are required in our building with the exception of lunch or if the students are outside and can maintain, maintain social distancing. In terms of the technology and cell phones, students are doing a great job. If a teacher asks them to put the technology up, they need to put it up. But again, they've done really well. With our student section, we want to give a friendly reminder that um, we love that our students are coming to support the various teams, but want to remind them that masks are also required because we can't enforce that six feet of social distancing. So help us out there in the student section and remind your student to wear that mask, please. I um, hate to talk about this, but do want to talk about it. KCS came out with a vaping policy last year, and you can see it below. I'm not going to read through all of it, but just know that if students are found on campus with a vape, that there is um, a law enforcement piece to that where they are given a citation and there are certain disciplinary things that happen as a result of that. So you can let me know if you have questions about that. Dress code is starting to get a little bit cooler here, but a reminder to all of our students that to work hard to be in dress code, wear appropriate things. I can tell you from experience that some classrooms, the heat is on and some the AC is on. So I always tell students to really try to dress in layers so that you kind of have some different ways depending upon what the temperature is like in your um, classroom. In terms of academic expectations, we want students present. Junior year is a big year. There's a lot of things happening. Um, it's kind of that introduction to that upperclassman mentality and feel. We want students participating. I keep reminding students that these are the teachers who you're going to be requesting recommendation letters from real soon. So making sure that they're engaging in the class content and working with their teachers. And also want to remind students that it becomes their responsibility to communicate with teachers, really trying to advocate for themselves. We want the parents to be a part of this educational plan, but we also want the students to kind of start walking in and communicating and advocating for themselves as we go here. So um, pretty important things. A few last things before Ms. Tenry takes it over. Our hallways are closed unless they have a note from a teacher. Library is open for students um, before school. We keep those exterior doors locked, so we don't want students allowing others into the building. Um, that's pretty specific and just from a security standpoint. Also a reminder, students are not allowed to leave campus during lunch. Um, that is a disciplinary infraction, so just help us out there and remind them that the only time they're allowed to leave campus is with your permission, a doctor's note, something like that. Hey guys, it's Miss Tenry here. I'm gonna go over some things with you guys pertaining to score and testing um, and class visits. So that's really the first thing. Um, we'll be going through um, into class visits. So I usually conduct them earlier, but since we had a later start this year, I'll be going into class visits, all English three and U.S. history classes starting um, mid-October. So that's where I'll talk to your students, have copies of their transcripts, um, go in more detail about score, um, how we're looking at colleges, all of those things. Um, and a little bit we're going to touch on here, um, but I'll also be sending out some updates for you as we go as well. Um, so the civics test, that test we gave um, 10th grade year. Um, we know that there was kind of a, a cutoff there, so we'll have some updated um, 
give you some updates about the testing for the civics exam as soon as we have more details about that. Um, it is a graduation requirement, so we do want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to take it um, as many times as they need. Um, so PSAT, that is uh, the registration for that has closed, but I want you to keep the dates in mind. So October 29th and January um, 26th are the two test dates for the PSAT. They are both in school um, and it is junior year. It is what is used to qualify for national merit. Um, so if your student has signed up for that, make sure that they are taking their time. Um, it is a it is can be a very important test. Um, ACT, um, I'm going to go into some more detail on the next slides regarding that. Um, students know that they can always check in. We have an open door policy, so they are, they are always more than welcome to come by. I am around the building a whole lot, so make sure they know to use the kiosk. Um, we have a little check-in system, um, and that sends me an alert that your student has stopped by, and I send for them as soon as I can and get back in, in my office. Um, getting involved, so that's a huge important thing right now. Um, I think it's really important to find things of interest to get involved in. So what are those clubs? What are those sports? Um, what are some some volunteer activities that, that you can find that are really important to you versus just trying to find things um, to, com to fill a resume? Um, so ACT, ACT will be in school. Um, March 2021. Um, so that is when the state provides the exam. Um, I'll have a lot of students have asked about ACT prep. Um, there's tons of prep out there that's free um, that you would not have to pay for. So on ACT's website, the ACT Academy is a completely free program. Um, they also have test booklets that you can download that would give you um, an idea about what the ACT test looks like. Um, there's other steps as far as um, books available, um, the test prep companies that are available, but I would try to utilize what is free out there first before looking um, into anything else. Um, so to take the ACT, again, we'll take it in school in March. Um, any other test date that, you're, that your student's going to sign up for, they have to register and pay for it on their own. So actstudent.org is how they register for those exams. Um, ACT has Saturday test dates. The exam is $55. Um, there's a writing component that you can take, but it is not, it is not mandatory. Um, the $70 is what the writing exam, ACT, with writing costs. Um, the late fee for ACT is $35, so make sure you're paying attention to all of the deadlines for the registration because that's a pretty hefty late fee. Um, and one other thing to add about that, there is a um, educational opportunity service, um, it's EOS. So when they're um, signing up on ACT's website, you can opt in for that. Um, it's a great thing to opt into. That's when you'll start getting um, emails, your students will start getting um, the flyers in the mail as far as different schools and programs that they have um, and it connects their interest from when they were registering um, to what programs schools have out there. Um, let's see. So here are the test dates for the for the um, ACT, the Saturday test dates. Again, make sure that we're paying attention to the, the small bubble. So the orange um, is what the registration deadline is. The blue, the small blue bubble is what um, the late fee is. Um, so Ms. King, she's our college and career counselor. Um, she will be partnering up with me this year um, so that we can make sure that students are getting all the information they need about post-secondary information. Um, fairtest.org, so this website up here, um, she's really recommended once you start identifying schools um, to check this website. Um, some schools have opted into um, being test optional for the next year, some for two years, some for three years. So make sure that you're checking this, this website um, to verify um, if your school you're applying to will be under that. Um, SCORE is the program that we're using for post-secondary information um, and exploration. So um, your students two weeks ago, I believed they would have received an invitation to the program 
um, the the invitation only was for 72 hours. So if they did not register, they do need to send me an email so we can get them registered. So my email is here. It's andy, A-N-D dot tenry, T-E-N-R-Y, at knockschools.org. Um, I can send the invitation to them to get them logged into the program. Um, there is a... Um, there is an area where they can invite parents so that you'll have a login as well. Um, but it's where we'll end up sending transcripts. Um, if we have colleges that are coming to visit us, all that stuff will be on, on there. Um, it's also where they can start building a resume. So there's a activities and achievements. Um, that's where they'll build their resume and it actually prints out um, a template for them. So it's a really it's a really cool program. Um, the main thing to work on and to focus on now, I know a lot of students are kind of, they're really worried about what they should be doing. So right now it's about learning what's out there and learning themselves. Um, so we wanna look at the what the college preferences are. Um, so there is a tab in SCORE um, that has, here it is, um, so it's this tab right here, so college preferences. Um, it goes into s different characteristics of colleges, um, some things that you might be interested in uh, if internships and going um, overseas, like if those kinds of things are interesting to you want, then you can start adding it like that and it'll start narrowing down the colleges for you. Um, the activities and achievements is here um, and your student can add their um, things that they've been a part of throughout school um, and the export resume button is here. So we're going to send a more detailed, um, more of a live session with the score later so that you can see what all those things look like um, and how, how they can invite you so you can be a part of that as well. Okay, so we're getting ready to finish up here. Want to remind, which of course, if you're watching this, you are already in that class of 2022 Canvas page. We are going to continue to post things throughout the year, send announcements to students. Um, hopefully they are taking advantage of that and kind of checking that as they go on a daily basis. Some final thoughts. Um, Want to remind your students to please be kind to one another. Sometimes students can say pretty hurtful and mean things. And so just reminding you to have conversations with your student on a regular basis about their words and their actions and how they can impact others. Other thing is reminding your student that masks do need to be worn over the nose and the mouth to protect the people here in the building. <laughs> Communication, Ms. Henry and I are really working on communicating with students in a variety of ways. We understand that some students prefer the remind text messages, some are checking social media and Twitter, some are checking email, and others are checking Canvas. So the four ways that you see listed on the screen are the ways which we are going to be communicating with students. Hopefully one of those, you know, will provide an avenue so that they can get information. In terms of parent communication, we definitely use Aspen and we are trying to use the Remind text message app as well more frequently. So if you have questions about that, let me know and we can try to get you connected to one of those forms of communication if you're not getting something right now. We're going to see you all around. Um, we're excited this year. It's kind of been a crazy rough I'm not going to say rough start. It's been a really crazy start is what it's been. And so thank you for being patient with us as we're juggling all these different things going on. If you have further questions, the link right here in the yellow, and it's also linked below on the yellow page, will take you to our live Microsoft Teams meeting where myself, Ms. Tenery, and all the grade level administrators and counselors are going to be on there to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to jump over there. If you don't have any questions, you can go ahead and move to your student's first block class. You will do that by clicking on the dashboard in Canvas and then selecting whatever their first block class is. So again, be patient with us. This is the first time we've ever hosted a virtual open house. So we're hoping that it goes okay. Um, if you have other questions though, always feel free to follow up with teachers, follow up with myself and Ms. Tenry. We hope we can help you out. Have a great night, everyone.